Good morning to this morning. What a glorious day. Welcome to Groton Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, an open and affirming congregation. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. There is a plethora of <laughs> announcements. Kathy Johnson has something to say first. No, it's getting to the point where you're like, uh-oh, Kathy didn't get up. What happened? <laughs> um, wearing a different hat today. Um, you may have seen some advertisements for June 11th, which is Connecticut Open House Day. It's also Groton Heights Day. And this is, we kind of, I, I am your representative on that um, committee um, on behalf of the church and also the Avery Association. But at any rate, on that date, if you um, aren't familiar with it, area venues um, are open and for those that charge there's no charge they try to um, do a program if they can we have been participating for I'd say at least the last five years we open up our church to um, visitors give them um, some history of the church um, Sue has been kind enough sometimes to play um, the organ um, so we are signed up for this but I'm not going to be here, <laughs> and I am desperately seeking people that um, would be willing to be here during the day. It's from 10 um, to 3 or 4. There's always the conflicting thing with the ending time, but usually by 3 o'clock, everyone that's going to come has been come, has come. It, it's never a, a rush of people. It just doesn't <laughs> lend itself to that, at least for us. Um, but um, I think it's really important that that we still participate because it gets people in to our sanctuary. They, they see it and hopefully they come back on a Sunday. Um, but I do need people um, to, to monitor that. I um, would let you know exactly what we do, what the setup is. Um, so I, I did send out an email um, to a few people that I thought might do it. But if there's others out there, please see me after church. It's not a difficult thing to do. Um, you get people from all over the state, actually, because it's the Connecticut Open House Day. We've had people from Newington and, and you know, the western part of the state. Um, at any rate, um, and, and if you do it in shifts, like two people at a time, and you don't have to commit to the entire day. Uh, but please, please, <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> for some people to help out. Thanks. Hi, I'm Janice Kimball. I've been asked to ask you to please read the announcement about Ladies' Night Out in your bulletin and also to call your attention to some slips in the Medway table over there on your way to coffee hour um, about a junior handbell festival. Uh, what we're trying to do, uh, Sue Stottlebyer and I, is to give some free lessons and an invitation to young people ages 7 through 12 uh, to come and learn the basics of, of handbell and hand chime ringing and to have some fun this summer. Um, it's uh, July 7th through August 11th. And uh, registration, of course, is limited. So we want people to plan ahead. So if you know a young person, uh, ages 7 through 12, uh, please see me or uh, take a registration form and, and share it with the person. We, I think you'll be glad you did. And thank you very much. My turn. <laughs> um, just a quick reminder about the Shoreline Ringers. Please read that June 15th. Um, the Stewardship Committee, this is something that hasn't appeared before. Please read that carefully. It's a very important uh, month-long raffle in September. And I want to say thank you to the myriad of people who worked all week labeling items that came in for the yard sale that was held on, yes, on Saturday. And it was, I think, a very fine success. And because of the success, 
we're offering 50% off on everything. So please make sure you meander in there and take a look around, okay? All right, I think that'll do it for the announcements. All right, let us be a people of worship and join me to the call of worship. Let the creator be home. Oops, I'm reading the wrong one. It's your turn first. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Let the Creator be home among us. In our hearts, may God be welcome. May God's love shape our every thought. May our actions lead to God's justice. May our words be words of life. May God's Spirit lead us. May God's peace swell within us. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together when morning gilds the skies. Page 100. God's love is our nourishment, God's truth our liberation, God's words our wisdom, God's peace our home. Welcome to the love of God. Please be seated.
this morning we had the gift of watching the sunrise instead of it being hidden by the fog. And so it was a gift to start this day with that bright day. And it's a nice gift for me to see your bright faces here in the sanctuary, knowing that you have been those who have received and are making the choice to want to offer in return. In many ways, uh, thanks to God. And so at this moment, we give you the opportunity to do so through your financial gifts, which help to continue the shining of the light of Christ here for all who seek it. Thank you. Good morning. ask that you would join with me in the unison prayer of dedication that's found in your bulletins, please. May these gifts be used to build the beloved community through our hands of service in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus, our Messiah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Sally, I'm going to take you by surprise.
Could you take that anthem that you just sang and the second verse, I think it was, build me a church, and would you come and read those words? I was surprised as I was listening to them um, because it kind of tags into what I want to say for my children's message. If you would just read those words, build me a church, For God said, build me a church, a place that welcomes all. Say, can, can you move up to the microphone? <laughs> For God said, build me a church, a place that welcomes all, the mighty and the low, lowly, the great and the small, the beggar and the wise man, the fancy and the plain, those who thirst or hunger, those who are in pain, we're all the same in this room. There is a feeling of joy. In this room, in this very room, makes me want to cry. Yes. <laughs> now go forth and spread the peace, the love, and the joy from this very room. Thank you. Yeah, I was caught by those words in this room. I was trying to decide where to go with my children's message for today in light of the scripture passage about Lydia, but also about the man who has been paralyzed for 38 years, and my sermon is based on that. But it was, how do I describe what Jesus was trying to help people create in this world, and what are we trying to do in 2022 in light of some of the things that are happening in the world last week? last Sunday after church, we had our open conversation. And there was a good response of people, and it was a wonderful opportunity to talk and get to know each other. And we're looking at June 12th, possibly, to have a second one. And there's going to be a picnic after church, I believe, according to Ann Campbell. Um, and so we're hoping to do some of the community building. But I was trying to figure out how do we think about it, and your anthem went right in with what I was trying to get at. But I was also trying to come up with a way to describe the image. And I was talking with Diantha yesterday about this as we were doing our walk. And some of you enjoy watching Finding Your Roots. Any of you watch that on PBS? Yeah. Isn't that a wonderful show? It's you know, where there's a couple people who come in and, and Henry Gates is able to do their ancestry and give the, the heritage some of the, more recently, he has been dealing with a few black people who have, you know, gone through, their families have gone through slavery and then back in time. And Michael Strahan was on this last week, and the most fascinating thing is that he is actually related to Charlemagne, which they found out through his DNA, which was absolutely captivating, and he had no idea. But I was, you know, that you can go and look at your family tree and see all the interconnectedness that is there, but also some of you may have noticed if you're on Facebook with me, that there was this tree, and I'm gonna walk around so you might be able to see it. There's this tree that was clinging to a cliff and the roots were very visible as it was able to somehow or other survive despite the way that it was growing. And it's really quite fascinating. And I offer that to you, in order to consider maybe that represents our life too. <laughs> you know, how have we gone through challenges in our own life and feel like this tree just clinging on and, um, and, and that the roots of which we have come from, I know it's fascinating, uh, the roots from which we have come in our family tree but also in our own personal lives are sustaining us and one of the ways that I personally feel that we are sustained is through our relationship with God, revealed through, and through the teachings of Jesus, but also through our walk together. And so I was trying to figure out how do I think about the connectedness of those who have made the choice to be open to the teachings of God through Jesus, and somehow or other these tree images keep speaking to me about the rootedness 
And so I just invite you into that image as well, and I will show this to the choir. Um, but think about how we are interconnected. We're not intermarried. You know, we don't have um, um, marriages that, that connect us. Some of you do, um, but I come from away. <laughs> and so I just invite you to think about how your own lives are interconnected through the relationships and help to strengthen the growing of the tree that is here in Groton. And I thank you for your attention and for your consideration as well. May God bless us as we do walk together. I now move into a time of sharing the joys and concerns of our congregation. And we are at that time again when the numbers, um, yesterday we were requiring masks for those who came in for the yard sale, but we're not yet there within our, the life of the, uh, the worship services. We may get there, so stay tuned. But we pray for those who have been stricken by COVID, and especially for those who are caring for people who are trying to overcome it and for the ways that it is just rampant across the globe. And so may God bless us as we continue to find ways to stay healthy, but also recover from the virus and for all those, this new um, virus, the monkeypox, that is taking some by surprise. Are there other particular prayers that you might have? Yes, Ingrid. Okay. Ingrid is lifting up prayers for those who are hearing the words of Christ, but they are being clouded by others who are proclaiming they have the message, but it is not quite the truth that we have heard. Maybe that's the way to put it. Um, she and I were talking. I have heard some very disturbing news this week about those who are proclaiming that they are doing certain acts in the name of Jesus that are really, really troubling. And so I am very thankful for your presence as we do walk together and try to learn what the teachings are for our own hearts and minds, but also for ways to strengthen this community. There are some challenging days, I think, that we have coming ahead of us. And so I thank you for having the um, minds and hearts to be open and, and the importance of being a community of faith, trying to listen to the teachings as revealed through Jesus. This is going to be a really important piece in these coming months. Thank you. Um, other prayers? Yes. Um, I, I'm a couple weeks behind, but the um, daughter of a cousin of mine um, had a baby girl about two or three weeks ago, um, and she has sisters, her name is McKenna, but she is what I have found out is called a rainbow baby, which means that Sarah had a baby that didn't live, and this is the next baby. Okay. And so we lift up prayers of thanksgiving that McKenna has arrived in the world, being known as a rainbow child because the previous one did not survive. Correct. Oh God of grace, hear our prayers. Thank you. Yes. I have a prayer of thanks. We had a young man helping us out yesterday as a volunteer who was at Waterford High School. And one of their programs is a community outreach. And he found out about our prayer, tag sale, on Facebook. And he came here to volunteer his entire day with us. All we had to do was just sign off on him that he was here, helping lift things around, carry things around. A delightful young man who is in his senior year will be graduating and going on to college. So we are very, very thankful for Sebastian and his, this is one time of Facebook work, really. <laughs> <laughs> and he came here and he was just delightful. Merrily is giving up the prayers of thanksgiving that many of us have for the arrival of a young man named Sebastian, who was a senior at Waterford High School. And he found out that we were having a tag sale yesterday through Facebook. And as she said, that is one of the ways in which Facebook has been a real gem. And that he came and gave, stayed the whole day and helped out and carried and did anything 
that people asked of him as part of his community service. You just took part of my sermon. <laughs> and we give thanks that Sebastian came with such an open and willing heart yesterday for his, for his love. Oh, God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes, thank you. Yes. Sue was lifting up prayers of concern, but also uh, sorrow for the family who has lost a man who drowned, who, 16, um, who was at Old Lyme High School. And for all of the community there, as they hear the news and discern how to care for one another because of this tragic accident, oh God of grace, be with them all as they help one another and share your love. And for the family in particular, oh God of grace, hear our prayers. Yes. I have a blessing. Um, my son was married last week in Seattle, and I was able to attend it. Okay. We give thanksgiving for a wedding of? David and Jillian. And David and Jillian in Seattle. Oh God of grace, hear our prayers. Let us now move into a time of a silent prayer and for the pastoral prayer. And the Lord be with you. And let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give thanks for the open windows and the chance to hear the bird song filling the air. For this time of year when the birds greet us so loudly, it is such a joy. We give thanks for the gift of this sanctuary in which we can come and walk together and share this time of worship, to be open to your guidance, to hear the prayers of people who some have joys and some have sorrows. Touch the hearts of those who are rejoicing and may they continue to let that joy fill them as they go forward this day. But for those who are grieving, especially the loss of a young man, be with their hearts and minds and help them to find those who can walk with them. In light of that, we also lift up prayers for those who were in the church in California last Sunday coming to worship and praise you and received as well a man who came with the intention to harm and kill. There are so many families grieving as well as those in Buffalo and as well as those in so many other mass shootings that have occurred in the last several years. Lord, we are those who sit here stumped, frustrated, and feeling powerless at times, not knowing and understanding your ways but know that you value the free will of each person. And so help us to continue to walk into that mystery and not lose hope, but continue to find the ways to love as revealed through Jesus who went through so many different types of circumstances and sufferings. Let us not surrender to that, but rather to your love let us listen. Let us look and see the mysteries being revealed even today. I give thanks for all of those who are caring for the ill, for those who are giving of themselves to help others. We give thanks for the success of the yard sale yesterday and for the countless hours that were offered. But guide us this moment as we join our voices together strengthening our ability to walk with you as we say the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now move into the joining of our voices and sing hymn number 487, Help Us Accept Each Other. Psalm 67. May be God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, Selah, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth, Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. We also reading Acts 16, 9 through 15. Bear with me on some of the pronunciations. <laughs> During the night, Paul had a vision there stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to, to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis. And from there, to Philippia? <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. 
On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to a woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Thus ends the reading. And then we also have this passage from John 5, verses 1 through 9. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there is a pool, called in Hebrew Beth Zatha, which has five porticos. And these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? Well, the sick man answered, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take up your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. May God add a blessing upon these mysterious words of Scripture. All right. So, it's kind of odd to be offering some of these words after what I witnessed yesterday because many of you were incredibly active here at the yard sale <laughs> and made it such a success. Now, you may be wishing you were lying at home and resting right now, yes, and I realize that I may be preaching not to a ragtag band of disciples but some very exhausted disciples. But I say to those who are here grateful and rejoicing for all that happened yesterday and this week, congratulations. Thank you. But I'm also aware that yesterday was Armed Forces Day, and so I'm also thankful for all that they have offered of themselves, particularly mindful in this community, and for the ultimate sacrifice that many had to make so that we could enjoy the freedoms that we do have here in our country. And personally, I'm very much aware of those freedoms as a female pastor, and I'm so grateful for the fullness of life that I am able to live because of them. So how do we do this recognition of our freedoms and invite others into their own awareness? I'm going to say let's start, believe it or not, by taking a moment and looking at your own hands. Those which help you, help you do so many thousands and millions of things, but they are also the hands that you can turn around and share with your neighbors, and sometimes you can share them in small ways and other times in large ways, as young Sebastian did yesterday, yes, in ways that we didn't expect, but you help others carry the load that may seem heavy to them at the time. I saw a lot of helping hands this past week, young and old, and we all had the quiet joy, I had the quiet joy of watching many people offering without thinking twice about how to help out. And so through the, the experience of the yard sale, I know that the connectedness within this congregation was strengthened. And it was not done because we excelled above another person over certain things or outraced somebody on the track field but by pulling together as a team and receiving the items from people from the community who were offering them in order to help us raise some funds for the church, that other home to which we come and where we feel welcomed and we learn about how to be a part of the larger family of God. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. And even within all the COVID guidelines, we did it. You did it. Congratulations. The people cooperated. But for today's message, I will be focusing in on the story of this man who was living on a mat for all to see. When you think about the image of him lying there, he clearly had to depend on others in his community for his meals, but also to clean up his messes. 
and think about all the relationships that he had to establish and those he valued with certain people because of how they cared for him and how they talked with him despite his condition. I believe that some honored his soul just because of who he was and perhaps he offered them some wisdom that they found priceless. Then we learn about this moment when Jesus arrives at the scene and witnesses what is happening and realizes, wait a minute, something just doesn't feel right. He comes to a realization of where and how this man is paralyzed in his spirit and not just in his body. And so Jesus asks him, do you want to be made well? And he gives some excuses and Jesus doesn't accept them. And he says, pick up your mat, rise and walk. Can you imagine being him and going, whoa, <laughs> how is this possible? The scripture says that he had been physically an invalid and immobilized for 38 years. Not one or two years, but 38 years. That's a long time. Think about how his body had um, deteriorated over those years. Don't you wonder what was actually healed in his body? Just at Jesus' words. So that all of a sudden his muscles, muscles started working again. All the brain messages and the synapses started coordinating again, just at Jesus' words. I'm stunned when I think about it. And so let's go further. I started writing this sermon on, on Tuesday morning, and then on Thursday morning when we were at Bible study, Doris began to ask some of the same questions that I had written out. Wait a minute, how is this man going to start functioning again? Is he going to have to find a job? What kind of work was he going to have? Where was he going to live? And how is, you know, how is he going to pay for it? But you know, now he has to find ways to earn a living in order to pay for his living expenses. We don't know the rest of the story, but don't you wonder if Paul Harvey were here and looking at this, what would he say, right? <laughs> okay, give us the rest of the story. Rise up and walk, he said. Whoa. So I'm going to bring it home to each one of us. From my heart to yours and my mind to yours, think about your life right now. Is there a situation where you might be feeling a little bit lame and immobilized? <laughs> on the side of that is, do you find yourself dependent on others to do things because you don't think you can? And sometimes they get a little annoyed because you're asking for some help. And you get frustrated because you do have to ask for help. Sometimes that's natural, and sometimes it little gets, gets to be a habit. But think about it. If Jesus were to arrive in your life today out of the blue and say to you, pick up your mat and walk, what would happen? I think I would say gulp. <laughs> what would you do? Sometimes those words can make shivers go down your spine. But I'm going to ask those questions to us as a congregation, facing into the challenges of what is here for us in 2022. And I'm going to go back to that phrase as the ragtag band of disciples, exhausted as we are. Do we need to hear that command to rise and walk? How would we be respond and what would we be being asked to do with that command? What do you sense that we could be doing, especially after seeing and talking with so many people who entered into Dutton Hall yesterday? Think about it. There were an awful lot of people who walked through. And we're really excited to look at the items, but they were also thankful to have people to talk to, yes? And they were asking some questions. And so from where I said I know full well, first, it helps when we get to know one another better, such as we did last Sunday at the Open Conversation, where we reconnected, and know that we are not walking alone with all that is happening in the world right now and in our own communities and things. And we can give thanks for those who are present. And then we can name that our main work is to strengthen the environment where people can come and trust that we will be welcomed and not judged, and we can say that we are thankful for the opening words of our services, that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We all know that those are not easy words to live by, but we're trying to do our best. Those words remind us each time 
that each of us are called into hearing Jesus' message to love our neighbors as ourselves. And as we walk together into understanding what that means and how to do that, we see the fruits of our work. And I'm aware that one of my goals as I walk with you is to help you to work on how to strengthen your relationship with God to strengthen the work that is here. And so I have to help you say, can you hear that still speaking voice of God in your ear, that small voice within, in your heart? I have learned that over the years, many people do not give themselves the time to do that and can't believe that God would be speaking directly to them. And so we have to set up times to practice that. It's not just on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. We might have an experience just like this man in the gospel story where Jesus came up to him completely out of the blue. You have to note that this man did not go seeking Jesus, right? Jesus appeared in his life. Have you been surprised by an opportunity that came to you that was kind of making you wonder what's going on here? Reevaluate what's going on in your life and what it might mean then and what it might mean now. Personally, on Tuesday, I had to go out, I made the choice, let me put it that way, <laughs> to go out to Mesquama get Beach because I have found that when I stand there, I so appreciate the strong winds, but more especially the open space of that beach and that, that open ocean. And it was there that I needed to go in order to write my sermon for this week because of all that happened last weekend. I was very troubled by what happened in that church in California. <laughs> yes, I was troubled by that one white man who spent a lot of time doing research and he took months to plan and intentionally chose to go into a grocery store to terrorize and kill people of color just because they were people of color. And he had listened to the message of hatred coming out of the Christian community against people of color. I've been disturbed. He was responding to a fear, and he was afraid that non-white people were coming to take away his privileges as a white man. And so he made the choice that he had to stop them. To me, this is incredibly heartbreaking, especially because it's grounded in Christian messages. It's so heartbreaking in a large part because he does not realize that he lost his freedoms by listening to those who were proclaiming that message of hatred, not the people of color who were preaching love and the teachings of Jesus who welcomes all. The contrast is too much for me sometimes. He did not realize that those who were speaking this message of hatred were actually speaking because they were being paid. They were speaking from a place of greed to spew out this hatred. And this man ended up having a part of his soul paralyzed. That's where I'm making the, the connection with this man who's been paralyzed for 38 years. This man's soul was lost to this message of hatred. I don't think he had any idea of that. And so I realized that we are at a time in our country where we're not just at a political crisis, we're at a real spiritual crisis. And that's what's got my attention. Think about how many people who think that they can give their lives for this message and not realize how they've lost themselves. It's heartbreaking for me to watch. For us today, then, are you ready to do the work of this congregation that has publicly stated that we welcome people no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey? You're welcome here. That's a very powerful message. All people, not just some. How I wish that some people realized how they are, quote, limiting themselves and others by buying into that other message. And they're not seeing the beautiful wonders of God's creation with the diversity of all of life. That's part of the design, my friends. To, and that this call to diversity is to engage people's creative spirits, to witness that and to grow and invite us into developing into so much more. To offer a creative invitation, 
I invite you now to realize that I'm writing, I was writing that last part as I was looking out my window at the man next door who was working on the fish and the crabs and the clams that he prepares to sell. And I'm thinking about all the different kinds of seafood that he's preparing that people love to come and look for and eat. And think about all the different kinds of foreign foods that you might go seeking in one of the different restaurants in order to t you know, test your palate and see what you like. Can you imagine if all we could do was eat the cereals that we were given as little infants for the rest of our lives? You ready for that? No, okay. All right, so with that in mind, let's go back to Jesus' words where he says, rise up and walk. What does that mean for you personally? And what does that mean for us as a congregation? Let's move beyond our limited understandings and look at the words that were in Acts 16 where Lydia is welcoming Paul because she's trying to find some answers in her own life. And upon further study, I've learned that Paul returned to stay with her another time. It seems that she was one whose heart was opened by his teachings to comprehend who Jesus was and was inviting her to become and others and must have heard the call to rise and walk, and she did too. Therefore, she decided to choose to support Paul's ministry and according to a commentary that I read by Mary Fairchild, she wrote, Lydia's story shows God works through people by opening their hearts to help them believe the good news. She was able to personally experience that salvation is by faith in Jesus through grace and cannot be earned by human works. In response to this experience, she turned around and offered to care for Paul and she learned we cannot pay God back for our salvation, but we can help with the ministry and help others learn about Jesus. And so as we go forward this day, consider how your own life has been opened and how the salvation has come to you and that the invitation is there with the hope that you will help this congregation keep these walls, the lights going, the, yeah, the windows, excuse me, the doors open is what I want to say, and the lights on for all who come and seek, and that we will share how we have been those who heard the message to rise and walk in response to Jesus' call upon our hearts and lives, and we said yes. And so now we can rejoice because we walk together with others who know that gift, and we share the good news and hope that others will experience it as well. May God bless as we go forward and spread it as best we can. Amen. Amen. And so now let us close our time of worship together with a singing of an interesting hymn, Ours the Journey, number 458.
And so as we go forth, may the love of God go with us. May God's love saturate our memories and may God's love overwhelm us for God is love. As we carry God's love within us, may we carry God's love to the world around us. So go forth in that love of God. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.